Namaste. Well, it's the end of the year. A good time to sit down, look back, and analyze the progress that we made in this year. But why stop there? <laughs> why not look back at one's whole life? So that's what I've been doing over the last couple of weeks. I wanted to share some of that with you. This year has been a big one because I completed the shift from being a Shakta devotee, a devotee of the goddess Shakti, to being a Shiva devotee, a Shaiva. And some very amazing things were re revealed by this that, for example, uh, I actually had a long-running intimate relationship with Shiva going back to, I guess, 1970s. But he didn't appear in his form as Shiva. He appeared in the form of a lion. And at first, I thought it was Narsinghadev, Narsinghadev. But he didn't act like Vishnu. <laughs> Plus, he was very, very friendly, even from the very first contact. So there was an intimacy, there was a familiarity with this lion that led to more than 20 years of extreme closeness, inner and outer, because he manifested a form also in 2003. And so this eventually led to him revealing himself as Shiva and revealing that he was really my best friend all along. So, of course, this was wonderful. <laughs> and then he invited me to merge with him, which is even more wonderful. And, of course, this completely transformed, like, everything. And I'm still trying to integrate all that with everything that had went before. But what I can say right now is that my whole relationship with Shakti has completely changed. My relationship with other people and the world and even with myself has completely changed. And it's not possible to express it completely. It's really something that's beyond human knowledge, human experience. And... Uh, so instead, what I want to do is look back with a, a broader scope on my whole life, because I feel now I have reached basically the pinnacle, or the top of the mountain. And uh, in human life, it's not possible to go much farther than this without getting out of contact entirely with the rest of the human race. <laughs> Because in this life, I have basically reached the completion of human knowledge. I don't know how many of you have been following this channel here for a while, but especially with the release 
of the Dharmasar video guide, which you can get here, and the, well, the understanding, the revelation of Shankara's analysis of four states of consciousness based on the Upanishads. We have basically now the root ontology, the root categories of all knowledge possible. Because knowledge is only possible with consciousness. And if there are four states of consciousness, then the knowledge that we can have, the knowledge that's possible to have, must all fit into one or another of those four categories. And of course, those are Jagrat or waking consciousness, Svapna or dream consciousness, Sushupti or deep sleep consciousness, and finally Turiya, the fourth, which is beyond explanation, transcendental, and I believe to be the same as Brahman, Nirvana, enlightenment, awakening, whatever you want to call it, the highest stage of human consciousness. So those of you who know me know that I'm, I'm not one to toot my own horn. Um, I simply like to put out the information and allow people to recognize it on their own. And the problem is, of course, only a handful of people have recognized <laughs> what I accomplished in this life. Externally, my life has not been perfect, ideal, by any measure. But internally, through a series of winding paths, how can I say it? I wasn't a direct straight route. But trying this, trying that, experimenting, uh, making mistakes, failing again and again, not getting anywhere, then trying something and suddenly making a huge breakthrough that transforms everything. This has been the story of my life. Happened again and again and again. And so now I suppose it's time for me to come up with some pithy sayings, <laughs> proverbs that you can all write on your walls or whatever. But, you know, it's hard to do that because at the different stages of consciousness, at the different stages of spiritual evolution, things look completely different. And what is applicable and true and even necessary in one stage of consciousness is inappropriate, untrue, and a really bad idea in another stage of consciousness. <laughs> so it's really hard to come up with any one saying or one directive or proverb that guides everyone at every stage. Maybe a good one would be, try everything. <laughs> because there's so many things that you have to experience before you get a well-rounded perspective on the truth. Human life is complex because human beings are complex. And the root of that complexity is that we are originally Brahman. We are originally not God, but beyond God, the basis of God, pure consciousness. And we come into this world, uh, I don't know why, <laughs> for experience, I guess, and just taking on a body plunges us into ignorance. And then we have to struggle and fight our way out of it to get back to the original consciousness, the original understanding. Aham Brahmasmi. I am Brahman. 
Shiva Oham, I am Shiva. I am that knowledge knowing which there is nothing further to know. That's where I'm at. Everything that can be known is known by one who knows Brahman, by one who realizes. When I say no in this context, it means to realize, to actually experience oneself as Brahman to actually know oneself as pure consciousness, unconditioned awareness, awareness of awareness. This is Turiya. This is Brahman. This is Shiva. So in the lower states of consciousness, when Brahman then appears to manifest as Shiva, and then Shiva appears within the material world as Rudra. And then from Rudra, all these other gods and goddesses and powers and elements and forces and so many things, the laws of material nature and so on, manifest. There really isn't anything happening at all. So this realization leads to a state that's called Asparsha. Asparsha Yoga. Asparsha means unconnected or uninvolved, maybe a better word. That one sees the world but realizes I'm not involved. I am not the doer. I am not the creator. I am not the owner. I am not the destroyer. All these things are happening simply by nature's laws. And I am the watcher. So one feels supremely detached in this state. One feels that actually I have nothing to do with any of this. This is simply a play, playing itself out by its own inner logic and rules. And it's not worth trying to understand it because a lot of it is pure chance or pure uh, arbitrariness. Shapti can be very arbitrary. She can be very, like any woman, change from day to day. Change your mind, change your dress, change your hat. <laughs> you never know how she's going to show up. Because she is pure willfulness. And she has Shiva's sanction. Shiva supports her in all of this. <laughs> I think he finds it amusing that we get so serious and so caught up in it you know, and think that this is real, you know, that it all matters and that we have to do something, you know. I can see the wisdom of standing up and sharing this this knowledge. And that's why I created Noli. And we're going to expand on this and create a whole set of courses called the, the Knowledge. <laughs> So uh, we're going to see. I have some rather amusing plans <laughs> which are going to unfold over the next few months. And so I invite you all to stick around and participate. Things are a little slow now because it's holiday season. Happens every year. It's okay. I expect it. But after the first of the year, and especially after Saturn goes into Aquarius, on January 18th, you're going to see a lot of changes around here and in the world. Uh, and the way we're responding to those changes is by completely restructuring our presentation and making it as much as possible accessible to everyone, even those without 
a background in Eastern philosophy and religion and so on, culture. So uh, that's going to be our focus in the coming year and trying to put this knowledge, repackage the knowledge and organize it in such a way that really anyone can understand because everyone has these four states of consciousness. Everyone is Brahman at the core. And so everyone is capable of complete self-realization. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>